So in this video, I'll show you some absolutely mind-blowing functions that Leonardo AI has to offer, such as real-time canvas or real-time generation where you're typing things and it's generating these things and drawing them on your screen. I also make some comparisons to Midjourney, uh, which is something, a tool for generating art that I was using before this one. But I'm absolutely mind blown by how good and how user friendly Leonardo AI is. So let's just dive straight into it. If you're new around here, I usually talk about research, uh, but increasingly recently I have been understandably, uh, that's a lot of bliss in one sentence, uh, talking about tools and software and AI tools that can obviously help you maximize the effectiveness of your work in, in different ways. If you're one of my regular subscribers, you're wondering why I'm talking about art all of a sudden, some of you asked me to, to comment on the tools that I'm using. I've mainly been using these tools for my B-roll. So a B-roll, if you don't know, is basically an additional footage you see on your, your screen. So if I'm talking about uh, a vacation in Spain, you're likely to see something on your screen that's relevant to what I'm talking about. That's B-roll, that's what I've been using these tools for mainly. So the main thing about Leonardo AI is just how many options it has to offer. So remember, I'm talking from the perspective of somebody who's obviously not a graphic designer or not somebody really involved in this sort of work. And uh, therefore, this is not a comprehensive guidelines or uh, or review because there are so many options that I'm sure th uh, this tool has to offer. I literally just uh, managed to just touch the surface of what it has to offer. There are probably also some things I haven't been using in the right way. But even though, so again, from this perspective of somebody completely new to it, somebody who just needs it for a little bit of, of work, uh, I'm really impressed. So the first thing you see is, is how user-friendly it also appears. So all the options that previously you have to usually uh, search across different platforms. They're uh, here now all in one platform, which makes it extremely convenient. The first thing uh, I like is uh, in the dashboard that you can see now, you can see uh, lots of art. So basically things generated by other users. And uh, an important thing about it is that you can also learn. You can learn from their prompts. You can see what they typed to achieve this result. And apparently you can also use the models, uh, the models to reuse these models in other art as well as train the tool to create your own models. I don't know much about this option, but it's it just sounds really good. But now, how have I been using it? So the reason, the first reason I was really impressed is just how realistic uh, it is, how realistic uh, the images, uh, the images, the photography or whatever you want to call it, uh, that this tool gives me is so Again, for my work, I'm usually not interested in, in really abstract concepts. I just want some, some people, some faces. Sometimes I may use it for thumbnails for my videos, for my website. So, so generally, I don't want it to be abstract. I want to be as real as possible. And here, making it realistic is exactly what uh, this tool uh, provides, the options uh, that it provides. You have an additional option uh, to switch on, which makes it even more photorealistic. If you don't want it to be photorealistic, and this is something I only realized after a while, you have actually a range of different uh, different styles to choose from. So you can make it more into something creative or focus uh, or let the tool know that you're trying to generate food or some specific item. So, so it just gets it uh, even more accurately. As I said before, uh, the main thing I value about this tool is just that it's convenient. So convenience is the number one thing. And, and here this convenience, it relates to all the other related options that you have. So uh, so you can, from your dashboard, you can choose, for example, how many images you want it to generate, uh, something that's similar to some other tools I've used, uh, but it can also straight away decide what resolution, so basically what's, what's the size of your image. Uh, in mid-journey, and again, apologies if it's not true or some of the things are not true, or maybe I just haven't used it in the right way, uh, but I feel like in the mid journey, uh, the whole con the convenience aspect is probably the, ma the main weakness of that tool because you have to know the commands, you have to know how to use Discord. Again, probably most people do these days, but I actually had to, you know, kind of set it up and learn it. You have to uh, type, you have to know how to type all these prompts and commands, for example, to, to ch uh, change the orientation of, uh, of what you're trying to create to make it, you know, horizontal or vertical or just uh, to make it a rectangular uh, rectangular instead of uh, something that's square. 
here you have all these options you can uh, decide prior to generating the prompt you can decide what you want your image to look like then after you generated the image you can also quickly upscale it so you can increase its resolution making it even better another option is that you can edit it and this one is, uh, is really good as well you can edit your image which means that uh, one you can add text to it which is a big thing for me because again what I did before uh, when I was using for example Midjourney most of these tools they are not that great with text with understanding text numbers letters so uh, so it's not really uh, I don't think it's possible definitely not easy to generate something that contains text here however you can generate the image and then you can add text to it there's uh, lots of other things that you can uh, do with that uh, that editing tool again i haven't even tried most of these things but you can create a mask so for those of you who are familiar even a little bit with uh, some sort of editing or photo photo you know editing you'll know what a mask is but basically you can uh, help the tool know which part of the image you want to edit and then you can for example add some some stuff to the uh, to that image another thing that you can do quickly is just add motion something that we see increasingly but again there are so many different tools that uh, allow you to do that but then you have to upload something you usually created somewhere else and then it will uh, add motion to it here again it's all in one place so once i i created an, Im an image i can just add motion to it not a lot it's not creating a, a full-scale animation but it's just adding that tiny bit of motion again uh, perfect for b-roll uh, and also it, it does it in kind of intelligent way so this is something that impressed me as well first i assumed it's just uh, this movement this camera movement but actually it does try to kind of make it uh, more uh, make sense so if there are people walking the motion is trying to replicate people walking if there's a steam rising from a cup it will uh, work basically with adding motion to that steam now another thing that i mentioned at the beginning of this video is real-time canvas so basically you're drawing something and it's uh, supposed to recognize what it is and improving uh, and improve what you're drawing which is pretty crazy and and just absolutely impressive uh you do have to there is a lot of back and forth and you have to understand how it works so basically there is uh you have to use the prompts that's one thing that i didn't uh, initially realize so as you're drawing it helps to to create prompts at the bottom of the screen so i'm drawing a princess and i'm actually letting the tool know that i'm drawing a princess so so i'm helping it uh get it more accurate there is another option where you decide the creativity strength so again you're just uh you're just deciding how much the tool uh is to to add to what you're drawing Whole bunch of things i don't really play around with this too much but again i imagine uh, that, you know there is no limit to what you can create and it's just so impressive and absolutely mind-blowing what you can do and then uh, another thing that's really cool is real-time generation so here you're typing prompts and as you're typing it's creating these things so as i'm typing for example a hamburger fighting <laughs> with a cow you can see how it's changing uh the image as i'm typing as i as i finally arrive at the final uh piece of that of that instruction although it's not doing that great at the end but you can see how how impressive and well definitely fun it is another thing i'm typing is not a knight riding a horse towards you know towards this uh this castle and again it is generating all these ideas and then you can also decide at the end what style this is to be so you can change this image after you typed the prompts like i said there are so many other options and uh, the, the whole tool is really impressive really complex if you need it to be complex but also super user friendly uh, overall so that's uh, to me comparing it to mid journey like i said i, I used mid journey a lot since since it was released uh, to me the main thing about leonardo is that uh, it's better at creating these realistic scenes i know you can create realistic scenes with midjourney but i uh, for somebody like me uh i've been using that tool and yet usually there was something that's you know not quite as realistic as i want it to be sometimes i just needed to use more prompts i know there is a lot of prompts and stuff and things to work around the limitations but again for some regular average user i noticed that it's not as realistic as leonardo's uh art or like i said almost photography so it's just 
it's just absolutely mind blowing how realistic these faces, these people are. And this is for me the main thing because I usually prefer this sort of output. The second main thing, as I said already, uh, for me, uh, the main advantage over mid journey is that uh, is that convenience that I mentioned. So again, it's all in one place. It's all really user friendly. It doesn't really require you to remember or memorize anything. So even a simple prompt uh, in mid journey when you want to start creating art, you have to know how to type that imagine uh, prompt. Uh, here you just start typing a prompt. So so definitely how uh, this convenience and how user friendly it is. And now finally, I would say that the only thing uh, that I feel is probably where, where it's inferior to uh, to mid journey is generating abstract art, abstract uh, images in general. Now, as I said before, you can choose the different styles. So I so I may be wrong, and maybe you can create just as abstract concepts as mid journey, but I don't think you can at the moment. Initially, I wasn't aware of the different styles, so I was pretty frustrated with how you know how it was responding to my prompts about abstract things such as you know animals parting. Uh, as opposed to what Midjourney gave me, which is this great, great art, you know, something like looks like something out of cartoon. Uh, and then I tried to generate this this creepy old lady. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Uh, and again, uh, Leonardo just made it pretty realistic, not really creepy, whereas Midjourney did great. So a whole bunch of things. Uh, and then all these uh, psychedelic things and mushrooms and everything that I that I uh, try to generate again Midjourney did so much better it, it just generates something that's absolutely beautiful and you can definitely call it art uh like i said leonardo will do some of it i still don't think it's as good as generating these abstract concepts so so i guess uh, bottom line is depending on your needs you'll have to decide either decide or maybe use both but you'll have to decide most likely which one just suits your needs more for me, it's definitely Leonardo. This video is not sponsored in any way. It's just an honest review. So for me, for now, this tool just beats all the other tools and that's what I'll continue to use.